All right, everyone, here we go. This is a weekly reading. The most misunderstood reading in tarot. <laughs> Tell you what. Uh, I'm just going to give it to you straight. What this reading is, you get one sign for each card. All right? You get one, one sign for each card. That's what you get. <laughs> That's it. Now, you get one card for each sign. Twelve cards on the table, some bottom cards, and some overall energies across the top. We take a look at the week. Yeah, the one card, maybe you're an Aries, and that's your card. Great. Terrific. But the whole reading is one big all signs reading. It covers the entire flyover for the week of the soulmate cycle. So pretty much every card is your card. Sun, moon, rising, Venus, obviously. But the whole reading tells the story of the week. So pay attention. In my pre-shuffle, this is Lionsgate week here. It's Lionsgate week on Steve's Love Tarot this week and next week. It's a general reading. It may or may not resonate with you, but if the title brought you in here, you're here for a reason. If you found Steve's Love Tarot, you found it for a reason. Because I'm shit at marketing and tagging. And um, it's not timeless because it's just this week. Week of August 8th through the 14th. Bottom of the deck in my pre-shuffle when I sat down just to get a feel for the energy here because it's weird. Lionsgate's making everything weird. I've been seeing weird shit all over the place on my walks. The Nine of Wands. Somebody this week, Lionsgate, is punching them in the face. You can picture Lionsgate as Mike Tyson, and your person is standing there, and he just decides to punch him in the face. Maybe he picked on. Maybe your person picked on one of Mike's pigeons. I don't know. Mike likes pigeons. You don't want to mess with pigeons. I don't know. But a little bit of a Nine of Wands, a little bit of an oh shit, what do I do? Underneath that is the Eight of Swords. I pulled one clarifier on my pre-shuffle. Eight of Swords. That's your person. There you go. I don't know. I feel a little bit of... Uh, I, I feel some movement for a lot of you this week. I do. I'm shuffling the deck. Don't let those cards fool you. It's those moments. You know, your person's prone to overthinking and all of this stuff. We got a little Nine of Wands. A little bit of a wall around the emotions. But... Uh, I don't think it's going to be enough to hinder things. Uh, I'm not going to prejudge a reading. i got to stay neutral, so I'm going to my field that I sit in. We'll see where we go. I'm shuffling the deck. Give me the week, universe. Give me the flyover on the soulmate cycle sign by sign. All right, and then the whole thing, I'll pull some uh, clarifier cards over the top. Three cards that will sum up the whole week for us at the end. All right, here we go. All right, let's do it. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is why. This is why the Eight of Swords and Nine of Wands is there. Overall energy of the reading is the Page of Swords. Somebody doing a little spying. A lot of spying energy. It's, it's in the energy. It's really weird. I talked about it early, early this past week. I said it's just if they stop spying for a while, they're coming back. They're coming back around. Underneath that is the Six of Swords. Yeah. Uh, this is two things. Every time they spy on you, they get more and more worried that they're not good enough for you or that you're really, go you're really awesome. And, and you're, they're intimidated by you in this cycle. This is really weird. This doesn't usually happen in the soulmate cycles. But, but we have a real vast canyon between the emotional uh, stability, the emotional maturity of the two people involved. You all, most of you are the Divine Feminine watching these tarot readings. You're on the evolutionary scale of the soul, as far as emotions go, you're a human being. Your person is that of a chimpanzee, or in some cases, a tortuga, which is Spanish for turtle, for those of you that don't know. You know, there's something around there. They're, they spy, and then they're like, oh, this would be so great. It's sort of like, this would be so great. It's like driving by a house that you want, but you can't afford. You know, you, you drive by it every day on the way home from work, and you see it, and you want that house. And every time you see it, you get more and more depressed that you can't have that house because you're just, you don't have the cash or whatever. You know, you're not good enough to get that house is essentially what that means. Uh, anyway, that's, that's my take. Let's go sign by sign. Aries, what you got? Universe give us, you got Sarah Gilbert. Somebody out on Twitter is confused about Sarah Gilbert. Yeah, it's the Roseanne star. It's not the scientist or, or the inventor of this or that. No, it's, I always say washed up sitcom star. Somebody who drew this card was watching Roseanne reruns. I don't think my characters are that confusing. I really don't. 
I try to explain them all the time. Aries, two of swords, Sarah Gilbert's getting in your way. Aries is in the next sign. Cancer has been hating Sarah Gilbert. Aries, you're next. You're next on the Sarah Gilbert list. I tell you what, your person, they, they want to reach out to you so bad, drives them effing crazy. Just batshit crazy. But they're fighting themselves. They're getting in their own way a little bit this week. It's Lionsgate. It's, it's frying their brain. It's frying their emotions. Now, I'm not clarifying. We'll have to see what other cards come out to see where it goes. Okay, so keep in mind, your card plays. Every, each card that comes out clarifies the, the other cards around it. So it's okay. We'll see where this goes. We'll find out a little bit more when we pull Taurus. The world. Yeah, this is changing for you. Okay, you can you can bet on that. That energy is clear. The world, most powerful card in the major arcana. Don't let anyone tell you differently. Drives me crazy. You used to be able to Google the world card, and it used to say arguably the best card in the deck. I don't know what it says now. It says something like, oh, shit, I got the world. You know, I mean, or something. I don't know. Oh, the world. Oh. This is one cycle. Taurus, you got a cycle ending and a new one beginning. I just did an energy update for you, and this card pretty much backs that up. Okay. Uh, this this is a big week for you, Taurus. This is a big week for you. And Aries, your person might stop swatting crows sometime soon, I hope. Gemini. Ah, Gemini, they're back. They're back. It's like fucking poltergeist. Uh, yeah, judgment. It's some something. I don't want to say something you thought. There's been a lot of spying around you. I've seen it in the energy updates. I saw it in the August reading. Somebody just can't walk away. There is still, it's coming back with purpose. There is still some kind of door that needs to close on their side before they can come towards you. And I think the timing is here. With judgment falling here for this week, this is a week where your person might actually be able to get in the store and buy something. And that something is you. All right? Cancer, come out from under the table, my cancer people. These poor cancers, I swear to God, they're going through the ringer. Everyone should just feel sorry for them. I do. I love them. They're terrific. Oh, cancer, 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 cancer. Kurt Cobain in pain. And for anybody who's confused, this is not Kurt Cobain, the inventor. It's the guy from, <laughs> I don't even know if there is one. It's the guy from Nirvana, Kurt Cobain. Why would the inventor be pissed at Dave Grohl? I don't know. It don't make no sense. Who's Dave Grohl? Well, if that's if you don't know who any of these people are, please, honest to God, I don't know. Anyway, uh, Kurt Cobain and pain cancer. This is good for you. I know you're all crawling back under the table. This is good. This is what's going to spur your person on to finally freaking do something. I've told you that before. They they're disappointed in themselves. They're disappointed in the fact that they don't have you. Your person is always the Burger King. Got to have it their way. That's an ad campaign for those who might be confused. That Burger King used to have, you can get the Whopper your way, but you never do. You know, that kind of thing. Anyway, three of swords. Three swords. Uh, they got a lot of disappointment around them. There's a lot of disappointment in themselves and disappoint they feel like they let you down i think they want to make it right but i'm not clarifying let's check leo here what's going on with leo ah, leo leo is healing from something and i see that in the readings i pull for leo there's somebody i'm you know nobody can tell leo's soul made apart from them it's tied together they're wrapped together like a tight rope like a wet rope i mean you couldn't spot a strand if you had to Somebody on somebody's side, Leo, and you know I always refer to you that way, is healing. And they got the little heart right here next to them. Somebody's healing from something. Something ended. And I see it here with the world. The world energy is like reflecting off of this. It, it's a, a, a whole new life, a whole new world on their side. Not a lot of action, but a whole lot of healing from it and thinking and just trying to get the shit together. Right here. And, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Right here, the uh, uh, Virgo. King of Pentacles. Holy shit. King of Pentacles is stability. The King of Pentacles is long term. This is incoming energy I'm reading. Your person sees you as this. Your person knows that they're not going to find you on Tinder. 
Um, I get something else off this card, though, strangely enough. I, I get that your person is very money-focused. They're trying to sort out some shit on their side about finances or something. They want to... They're, they're basing a lot of their self-worth maybe too much on, on their status, either financial or social, or both. Uh, I, that's just what I'm reading from their energy. So perhaps they want to feel like... I, it, they, they want to impress you, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And they don't have to. And that's, that's in the energy, too. It's just I, I, people like that confuse me. You know, I'm not impressed with your car. I'm impressed with the person. You know? I honestly, I don't care what you drive. I've met homeless people that I thought were very wise and very cool. I'm not inviting them over because they smell bad. But aside from that, they're very damn fine people. Now, I wouldn't, I'm impressed by them. Ju yeah, to a point. Judgment. Uh, judgment here is going to be red. This is red with the world. The re I kept pointing at judgment, so the universe almost made me do that. So Gemini's card here is going to tie somehow with um, Libra. And that's been coming up in the readings too. Gemini and Libra, uh, they've been for some reason, they've been getting similar energies. The Queen of Cups, yeah, somebody's coming to get their love. This is the biggest card of love for me. When I pull this, it's the most love one human being can feel for another for me. In my readings and we teach the universe how we pull cards so it knows what cards to throw us it's but it's it's also more than that as well this is a really the energies here are fucked up it, it's someone's realized this okay someone has been just sitting in this and, and thinking about this and thinking 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 all about this this love that they have confused by it to a point but there's a magnetic pole. They can't get away. They cannot get away from it. And it, I believe Libra might actually, a lot of Libras might actually hear from their person this week. I'm not clarifying, but we'll see what the overall energy cards are at the end. That'll tell us a lot about what all this means. So we're building the picture of the soulmate cycle here. If you don't know what I mean by that, I got a video in my mailbag called, a uh, playlist called Signs, Signs, Everywhere Signs. Go watch it. It'll help you with other readings you watch around the net, too, because you'll understand a little bit more about how all this works and all that and, and why sign, what signs are, what all that means. Anyway, uh, who's next? Uh, that was Libra. This is Scorpio. Oh, I love Scorpio's readings. Uh, temperance. Well, it's not a card of communication for me when it falls here. I'm not getting communication off it. I'm getting my mechanic again who's got my car up on a lift and he, I'm waiting around pacing the neighborhood and he's smoking a cigarette outside while my car's up on a lift. <sighs> Some, mm, something has to balance. It's a little, it's bookend in Leo here because this is all a big reading. It's bookend in Leo's thing. Something is balancing on their side. Some sort of karma is balancing for them. It's really a week where Lionsgate opens people up, but they realize they need to get their shit together if they want to come in. It's that kind of a week. It's a similar energy to what we got last week. It's just sort of one notch further ahead in things. I want to, I want to, I want to clarify that so bad, but I'm not going to do it because if I do one, and I'm going to get a bunch of emails. You're going to have to have patience, yeah, but there's more there than that. There's more there than that. You might have an energy update coming up soon, Scorpio. I want to know about that. Um, Sagittarius, two of pentacles. So confused, their ass is on the front, right? Right here. Uh, hmm. It's bookend in a little bit. Sarah Gilbert and the Four of Swords here. It's touching those cards. It, it's, a, it's indecision. Somebody is just... I don't know why, and I'm just going to say this. Somebody is afraid to talk to you. Somebody is... You, uh, what, what, what is so intimidating about Sagittarius? Why? There's, I, I could say they're juggling... Now, the card definition might tell me they're juggling two things and all, but that's not the energy that's there. I've got to be honest with you. The energy that's on this card is someone who's just confused by why they're afraid to reach out and talk to you, by why they don't want to move forward with things. You might even be talking to this person and they're confusing you in the conversations. It's entirely possible. There's just confusion here, and it's leading to indecision. Capricorn. Six of Pentacles. Well, mm, 
I, normally, I'd love to tell you that. <laughs> I'd love to tell you because the world's here and it's bookended and there's a kind of a color match. I'd love to tell you, Capricorn, that somebody who was breadcrumbing you is giving you the full loaf. Uh, I would love to tell you that. It's the Six of Pentacles, though. It can be a card of being stingy. A little bit it's just the universe just wants to tell you this connection's out of balance and somebody needs to freaking do something the universe itself is trying to move the cycle on um i would expect more breadcrumbing you have a very slow moving cycle that's why you don't get a lot of energy updates from me i'm just honest with you i don't want to pull the same reading over and over again nothing pisses off the universe more than doing that asking the question over and over again Pulling the same reading because you didn't like the first reading. All of that stuff will just get you some karma your way. You'll get slapped. Um, breadcrumbing? I mean, I, I, gaslighting? Ghosting? I wish I could clarify. You may have an energy update coming up too. You and Scorpio. I, I wish I could clarify. Let me look at the bottom of the deck. Well, the bottom of the deck is still the Six of Swords. Yeah, they want to. I mean, but... Anyway, we'll see what happens with the three cards over the top at the end. Maybe I'll get some answers here. Uh, Queen of Cups. Uh, Queen of Cups is tied. Okay, I pointed to it again. Queen of Cups is tied to Aquarius somehow. Queen of Pentacles. Yeah, I believe that's true. I believe that's true. And these are two queens that would get along fairly well. Although I think this queen would find this one a little hippy-dippy, uh, <laughs> to say the least. But these two would get along. Okay, Queen of Wands and the Queen of Cups, well, I wouldn't put them in the same room, um, but Queen of Pentacles here for Aquarius, again, somebody who sees you as, feels the love and sees you as something they can't just find anywhere else is coming back. I got, uh, you look at the row here, look at the row, somebody who was breadcrumbing you is coming back around, we got love here, somebody sees you as irreplaceable. Male or female, it doesn't matter that these are, you know, females on the card. All right, <clears throat> Pisces. You ready? The bird's here. He's been quiet the whole time. He's waiting for Pisces. You know he's a Pisces. You ready? All right. Two of Wands. He nodded his head, yes. <laughs> Son of a bitch. All right, the Two of Wands. Um, okay, this is good news for Scorpio and Cancer. By the way, this card falling here um, because the energies are just tied here. It's not tied here. Well, it is a little bit. I mean, not much though. It's it's. I'm being forced in this straight line. Uh, Pisces, somebody has let go of something, a way of thinking. I think for most of you, it could be a, a person on their side. Pisces has been tied to Cancer's readings for a while. Can both Cancer and Leo for some reason they got themselves wrapped up in their axis of, of power over on the hot spot. Right here, they're setting their intention to come towards you. When I'm drawn to this globe, I see a, I see them seeing a whole new world for you, which explains the light tied to the Queen of Pentacles here. Uh, you're irreplaceable to this person. Um, uh, cancer, it goes to what I told you earlier about how, uh, again, this Three of Swords, this Kurt Cobain and Pain is going to be the catalyst to actually make them come forward if they're going to come forward. And I see it right here. I see someone who just, you know, again, it's that August message of, Someone just can't take it anymore. The volcano's about to blow. And right here with Scorpio, the way it ties is somebody is rationalizing their feelings for you. Someone who's been, who's been scattered in how they feel about you, trying to apply logic to a love situation, is now rationalizing and balancing it with some love. Because the Three of Swords is a card of love. Okay, It always is. It's got a heart on it. That's why it has a heart on it in most decks. You don't get the Three of Swords unless you love something. All right? So that's what I got so far. Let's, let's get three cards over. You know what? I'm going to switch decks. Uh, I'm going to let the animal, I'm gonna, in case we get some duplicate cards here. Um, give me three cards over the top to sum up this week for the Soulmate Cycle. Uh, Scorpio and Capricorn, I would definitely expect, and, and maybe even Sagittarius too. I would definitely, but Scorpio and Capricorn for sure, I would definitely expect an energy update coming pretty soon. Uh, from me. I'm curious as to what's going on there. Uh, although I got a better picture of Scorpio now. What, what do we got here? Three. Somebody rationalizing that thing. Three cards. Sum up this week. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, everybody's feeling the soulmate connection, the two of cups. Everybody here, I'm, I've seen it in the reading. We got cards, even cards that are stagnant. You know, Sarah Gilbert, two of pentacles here. People, they're stagnant because they're confused because the, the power of the connection is very strong. It's two soulmates coming together. There is a possibility, they are feeling it. I'm not saying they're coming together, but I'm saying they are definitely feeling it. However, the next card right here might indicate otherwise. The uh, Page of Cups. The Page of Cups, everybody here is owed some sort of apology. Everybody here this week, everybody's person knows that they behaved the fool. And they're all showing up as a page in this connection. They always do. They always show up as a page. And I got two cards here, okay? I got this. I'm going to do a fourth card. I got the sun. This connection right here, just, just these two bookending each other alone. I say this to you guys all the time. This connection is, in the 5D, it's rooted in happiness. There is nothing but happiness. And what we've got is two 3D people, one in particular, your person, who's just been injecting negativity and doubt into it. Now, negative energy is all sorts of things. It's doubt, it's fear, it's all that. All that stuff is in there. Cynicism, all that. A pretense, that's all negative energy. And it's a beautiful connection. Um, the other card I've got is kind of where we started, the Nine of Wands. Uh, again, now our bookend is the Nine of Wands and the Two of Cups. This is someone who feels this connection, but is building a little bit of a wall around, yet they know they need to come in, and there's a lot of happiness here. Again, we're dealing with a stubborn person, emotionally immature, who's busy spying and looking at things, and every time they look at things, it's worse. What this person needs to do is stop spying. What they need to do, there needs to be some silence here in this connection. Uh, I refer to it as scripted silence. It's that, it's that moment of silence, and underneath that, by the way, that Nine of Wands is the Four of Swords. Silence. Sitting in the silence. It's that, it's that moment, scripted silence is that moment of silence right before a decision is made. Right before two soulmates come together, there's usually a quiet in the energy. And it's that moment. We don't have that quiet here in this connection. There's so much energy going back and forth between you two. I'm thinking about you and, oh, my God, are they going to come in? And, oh, my God, oh, my God. And they're thinking, no, 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 I don't want this. No, no, no. And, oh, but I love them. But, no, no, no. But it's, it's just so much chatter back and forth. There's a lot of noise. <clears throat> there's a lot of noise. All right. That noise needs to stop. I'm, I'm still waiting for that moment where the noise stops and there's a scripted silence in the air. When there's a scripted silence in the energy and it's that dead calm before the storm, then I know, then, these, then we're gonna start to see these nine of wands go away. We're gonna start to see these page of swords, all this spying energy will dissipate and some action will start to occur. We're on the precipice of it and I think Lionsgate's gonna help. Lionsgate is rewiring the emotional brains, the soul, if you will, of your person. I gave the, I gave the example once in an email to somebody about uh, smoking, because I used to smoke back in the day. I quit a long time ago, but smoking rewires your brain. Your brain gets rewired for the nicotine. Um, even if you quit, even if you quit smoking, uh, decades, you can quit for decades. Uh, and something can trigger you and you'll have a cigarette again and you'll you'll pick it right back up like you never stopped it'll feel the same as it did it won't be like the first cigarette you ever had it'll just be you're still addicted just the receptors die down a little bit and the craving goes away but it's always there once a smoker always a smoker and the reason I point that out here is with Lionsgate your person's getting rewired they're becoming a smoker basically so that's why I've been saying to you guys a lot, there's your person before Lionsgate, and, and it started a while back. It's not just Lionsgate. I mean, as recently as looking, I mean, there have been many factors, but the new moon and cancer ripped the shit out of this person's soul. I mean, it made them feel their feels like nothing I've ever seen before, and we saw it in the readings throughout July. But Lionsgate is, is again, there's before, I'm using it as a point. There's before Lionsgate, your person, and your person after Lionsgate. Your person after Lionsgate has started smoking, metaphorically speaking. 
So the way they feel about you is go they're going to feel this. Okay, they're going to do this, nine of wands. They're going to put up a wall. But they're going to feel all this. They're going to feel the happiness. They're going to feel the connection. They're going to want to come in. It's going to be the way they are from that point on. They're not going to be able to drop this connection. In other words, it keeps getting stronger and stronger and stronger. They're not going to be able to drop it. Even if they tell them they can put up all the walls they want, it doesn't matter. With these three cards coming out here, especially the Sun and the Two of Cups, Two of Cups is almost Major Arcana for me. It's a powerful card. You'll notice it didn't come out anywhere in the reading for any of the signs. But when I pulled the other deck here and I asked for three cards over the top that sum up the soulmate cycle right now, it did come out. And that's actually better. That's actually a more powerful place for it to sit than if it came out for one of the signs. I want it right there. Because this tells me that your person is having their first cigarette, right, metaphorically speaking, right around the 8th, right about this week here as it builds up. And they're never going to be the same again. Once they fully feel their feels, you know. And for some of you, it's going to cause more confusion. And for some of you, it's going to cause a cycle to, to change. And for others of you, it's going to bring them right back. And for others of you, like, like Cancer over here and this whole row of water signs, the water signs people, I mean, this is your water sign reading right here, these three cards. This person's really going to feel the pain of what Dave Grohl did to music. I mean, just like Kurt would. What have you done? What have you done? You know, it's that kind of thing. They're going to feel like, what, what, have, what have they done to themselves? What have they rejected? Well, for most of you, they rejected this because this is the center of the reading, basically. The center of this whole reading are these three cards because while I'm pulling on individual signs, it's a 12-card reading right here. The center of the reading are these three cards right here. Actually, not in that order, in that order. The King of Pentacles and the Queen of Pentacles, the two best cards in the deck for me to be seen as, as far as people go, can't be found on on Tinder or any of that shit. They're irreplaceable people. Long-term stability, fantastic. And down the middle of it all is the Queen of Cups. You know, they're going to be feeling some serious shit. And that's, it's powerful stuff. And that's probably why the week came out like this and probably why around YouTube you're going to start seeing readings of your person miraculously showing up or this and that. And, and that very well may happen. It's here in the cards. This Nine of Wands energy is very weak. It came out as a fourth card. I asked for three cards. It was the fourth card. It's weak energy. It's a flimsy wall. We don't need the Hulk to punch this down. We don't. We don't need him. Anybody can. A little 100-pound weakling. A little, you know, 20-pound <laughs> child could punch it down. It's not a big deal. It, it, it isn't. So that's your week. The week of August 8th through the 14th. It's going to be reflected in your energy updates from me. And by the end of the week, I should be starting the mid-months. So that's going to be interesting. Hmm. Those are going to be very interesting. But for, for some of you, you may actually hear from this person this week. Gemini wouldn't surprise me. Taurus, it wouldn't surprise me one bit. Uh, Libra would not surprise me at all. And uh, uh, wait, is this Libra? Virgo would not surprise me at all. Libra also would not surprise me at all. So, and Aquarius wouldn't surprise me at all either. So for a lot of you, it's a, it's a damn fine week. Stay tuned for your energy updates. It is what it is. This is what I got. I gave you all the energy I had uh, for it here. I read everything I could read that came out here. So a lot of spying though. Maybe do some strategy. If if it can be energetic spying, it doesn't have to be social media. But if it is social media, for a lot of you, there's an energy here of a person not sure how you're going to respond when they do come in, which is part of the reason they're putting up the wall. You know, just make it clear that you're cool. You're all right. I'm cool to approach. You know, something along those lines. Obviously, do whatever you want, but they are watching. They're watching what you're typing and all that, and they're feeling what you're feeling, so be careful about feeling negative things. It's just going to push them away. Uh, worry, uh, desperation, despair, anger, all of that is repellent to someone who's reluctant to come in to come in. It repels the energy. So keep that in mind. If you can't be positive, if you're too pissed at them and you can't be positive, be, neg be don't be negative. Be neutral. 
Go find yourself something to do. Like I keep telling you, put your fancy bikini on or your or your speedo. Go out to the beach if you're in the north. If you're in the north, if you're in the southern hemisphere, do it anyway. People will think you're crazy. It's winter time. What the hell. All right, whatever. Put it on anyway. There you go. That's your reading. I hope it was helpful to you. If you like this reading, please like, share, and subscribe. Appreciate all the subscribers and everybody who shares. These three cards are pretty good here. All right. That, that's a pretty good summary for the week, guys. So, there you go. Good luck.